right, it's the midweek edition of the show. We're at the close of yet another trading day. So let's give you that breakdown of market activities today and insights into some of the events driving the market. This is Market Pulse live on New Central in partnership with Narimetrics. A very warm welcome to you. I am your host, Joanna Mustafa. And on the show today, Senate increases windfall tax to 70%. Uh, will this affect investor sentiments towards banking stocks? We hope to have that conversation. And in South Africa, Morgan Stanley is predicting the JSE stocks will outperform cash and local bonds. We'll explore potential drivers of this and more. As well, a worthy, I mean, worthy of our spotlights today is a banking stock that has shown quite some resilience year to date. Uh, but first, let's begin with a quick market recap uh, on the NGX, the Nigerian exchange continuing its bearing run, uh, bearish run this week. Perhaps investors are still having their attention on the fixed income space uh, with NPR announcements. It's also possible that, you know, and possibly more like uh, that earning results with earning results slowly trickling in, investors are taking profit. So we're seeing the all share index down 12% to 100,365. Uh, Will we see us dip the NGX dip below the 100,000 mark by the end of the week? We have two days to see, two trading days to see whether or not that happens. But yes, considering its decline this week. If you come to the top gainers, the gains seem to be strengthening on the charts. Uh, international Yuri's leading the pack with a 10% gain uh, amongst others. And then if you come to the top losers list, we have Secure Electronic uh, Technology down by 9.43%. Uh, UBA Livestock and United Capital also making the losers list. Um, we're coming to the movers list now. FCMB, uh, they're doubling as both a top gainer and a mover when it comes to trade volume. Uh, they're leading the pack there with trade volume at 133.92 million uh, when it comes you know, to that. And of course, we're also seeing the banking stocks uh, dominate. Access Court seems to have a strong place on this top movers list. Of course, we'll be tracking that and their activities in the week ahead. Coming to the currency market, the Naira appears to be stable. Same as yesterday, 1,533 uh, Naira, 55 Kobo. Um, we're seeing some sort of stability in the currency market uh, today, right? Um, so we'll explore that conversation and much more. Olushola Ore Oyeniku uh, joins me after the break to assess the pulse of today's market. So stay with us. You're tuned in to Market Pulse. Right now, we're picking up the pulse of the day with Olushola Ore Oyeniku. He is, he is the head of research and strategy, Greenwich Merchant Bank. Thank you for joining me. Good afternoon. Good evening. All right. Good afternoon. Good evening, whichever one. Yes, it's great to have you in, Shola. Let's begin with your views on yesterday's marginal increase in NPR. Uh, CBN is seemingly less hawkish with the uh, hikes, uh, perhaps giving an ear to the private sector, but with inflationary pressures ahead uh, from the likes of the uh, new minimum wage and perhaps further government handouts. How important do you think it would be to maintain a more hawkish stance um, on interest rates, or do we need to see more of a balance here? Okay, so um, the increase uh, was reasonably anticipated uh, before the meeting uh, during our various engagements. That was uh, sensibly spoken um, to. Uh, you know, um, before the July meeting, we had um, several metrics has been tracked by CBN, uh, majorly inflation rate, um, currency, and also um, the GDP growth. Well, you reckon that. Um, the 50 basis points to 26.75 percent, uh, yes, it's, it's marginal. But uh, technically, what the committee did was to stem a possible panic in the market that might result from an announcement of an aggressive NPR increase uh, by tightening monetary conditions uh, without necessarily increasing the policy rates uh, uh, massively uh, by the asymmetric corridor uh, from plus 500 um, minus 100 mm -hmm. to uh, from the 100 uh, basis points uh, minus 200 basis points it was before. So reasonably, we uh, believe that the leadership of the Monetary Authority, uh, they right. continue to emphasize the fact that there are major 
consideration or focus mm. is to stem the tide of inflation rates uh, and also stabilize the exchange rate uh, as, as it is. Right. So, already on the back of this, uh, yeah. you take into consideration what happened in June from the figures provided by the National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, inflation rates increased marginally by 24 basis points to 34.14. Uh, you recall that before that, we had about three consecutive months whereby a month-on-month -month inflation dipped. But as of July, we saw an increase of about 0.17% um, to 2.3% on a month-on-month. -month. So um, we had safely um, emphasized that that will happen. So uh, I believe that um, expecting further tightening in the benchmark interest rates after the, this meeting, uh, we need to look at the various mandates and the situation of those various barometers of mm. measurement, um, i.e. inflation rate and exchange rate. But my sense is, um, given the various uh, initiatives that it's abound now, uh, from the 150-day uh, tax uh, rebate, so to say, and yeah. then things that are being done from the physical side, um, I believe inflation rates uh, will taper tip, tip down at least um, right. we'll, uh, we'll, going forward. Not we'll see whether or not, day, yeah. Um, We'll see whether or not, you know, things temper down in that uh, regard. Um, and it's interesting you brought up uh, the $6 trillion and, of course, uh, you know, the Senate signing that amendment. So coming to the Nigerian Senate, uh, they've taken things a step further. They took it a step further yesterday, not just passing the amendment bill, but increasing that windfall tax on banks' uh, FX gains uh, from 50% to 70%. What's your assessment on the impact of such a move? And is there any added effects on activities of banks on the capital markets with the ongoing recapitalization exercise? Yeah, so the attendant uh, impact of the 50%, yes, yeah, so the Finance Act was amended, um, given the changes in the windfall tax uh, that was recorded in 2023. Um, so Nigeria isn't the first. We've seen cases um, where it happened in Italy, South Africa, um, to mention, but few. So in a bid to stem or probably navigate the evolving macroeconomic environment, uh, a lot of things, measures were put in place, one of which was to collapse the exchange rate bucket. And that stem um, huge uh, FS gain that was reported by companies. However, on the other side too, um, some other companies, manufacturing companies, um, also reported um, uh, uh, liability, uh, losses on their FS liabilities. So I believe to, to balance things, Mm. Um, that's why uh, CBN had come up with that. And then you know that um, CBN, uh, drive the federal government as a prerogative to uh, do as it is appropriate in order yeah. to but, uh, provide sustainable uh, achievements. So um, do you, do you, I, do you, I believe that we need for some clarification in terms of the adjustments to um, for banks that have already... Mm. Uh, paid the thirty percent income tax. Uh, so uh, are they paying additional twenty? Yeah. Do you, and, and what else would they yeah, have so, Sorry uh, to interject here. Do maybe. you do you see investors on the capital markets, you know, responding to this, you know, in any way, this developing story? Do you see uh, investors responding? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so the first week we saw a three percent decline in the banking index, um, the market. However, um, since I've stemmed, uh, the tide has stemmed uh, as we speak now. So uh, I don't believe that, uh, I don't think uh, that that should adversely affect the ongoing recapitalization exercise. Right. Uh, investors still see value in some of the banks um, that are bound. So uh, I'm not sure that will adversely impact okay. on, we'll continue. on their position. We'll continue to monitor how investors respond. But let's move to East Africa now. Uh, Kenyan banks, they're warming up for their recapitalization exercise as well. Uh, there are plans by regulators to raise capital threshold for banks uh, to 10 billion Kenyan shillings, which is about 10 time, a 10 times increase uh, from the current threshold. We're seeing the activity exercise, you know, activities like this uh, drive, um, you know, attention to the NGX. Will this be any different for the Nairobi Stock Exchange or are we going Going to see more mergers than banks heading to the markets uh, to meet up with this new capital requirements. Yeah, so from from the figures available, about 24 uh, out of the 39 banks uh, fell short of the required minimum capital. Uh, the, so 
um, as at today, using uh, uh, today's money. So I believe uh, some of the small and medium-sized um, banks um, that fall short of this would probably look for uh, towards major acquisition, uh, whilst uh, the larger ones would look into the, the stock mm -hmm. market uh, to raise capital. Um, last year, there was about six um, consolidation exercises that Apple, um, six banks rather, consolidated. Uh, they, they made uh, so last year. I think they were being proactive. So I believe um, um, there will be opportunities for merger and acquisition, and then there will be increased activities in the capital market to raise to raise funds. Knowing uh, that nine uh, banks uh, apportioned for about 75 percent of the total industry assets in, in Kenya. So uh, my take is. Um, there will be opportunities for merger and acquisitions, and mm. also there will be some take in the uh, capital markets. Um, All right. So, I mean, opportunities this, for mergers, possibly more mergers, and we may see the number of banks perhaps even halve uh, in Kenya. That's something we'll be tracking here. Uh, let's come to the Kenyan currency now. Uh, the Kenyan shilling we know has slumped to an eight-week low against the dollar. Uh, markets continue to, you know, take or respond to the effects of the anti-government protests. How much of an effect uh, is this having on trade and tourism activities in Kenya? And do you see perhaps even a reversal, right, from them emerging the best performing currency in H1 to maybe even the worst in H2? <laughs> OK, so um, primarily um, the finance bill that um, was raised uh, in order to Raise additional capital was what prompted, or that was where all this is stemmed from, and the protest uh, commenced on the 18th, and a full-blown one where about 39 people were reported dead on January, uh, sorry, June 20th, 25th. So um, this has impacted severely on trade and tourism, like you know, uh, there is disruption to supply chain activities around uh, transportation, logistics, also the port and uh, customs. Um, mm. So also, also seen when investors' confidence in the markets. Uh, so from then till now, when the protest started till now, the market has lost about four percent. Uh, investors' sentiment is, is very very low now. One there's political stability, and that has um, really uh, provided uh, the investors a lot of headache, let me, let me put it that way. And, mm. and as such, uh, local businesses too. Uh, we are also expecting that um, economic growth would also taper down. So, so for tourism and all this. So I believe, um, yes, the, the currency uh, year to date has lost about 8%. But I believe if this is not stemmed, that's the, the protest, the ongoing yeah. protest is not mm. stemmed in the board. Uh, if there are no interventions, quick interventions as you speak, uh, I believe the, the, the Kenya shillings would um, further depreciate mm. in value. Um, mm. I believe something in the realm of about 16% that we are seeing um, year to date, it would, okay. it would further uh, decline. Oh. So this would primarily be driven by the unrest that we are seeing now, economic destruction, and then uh, the foreign exchange earnings. Uh, all those will be impacted uh, severely, and that all will right. provide we'll, we'll um, that yes, to that. Yeah, we'll see whether the Kenyan government, uh, I, th I think the president has reshuffled his cabinet now, whether or not that uh, creates some calm in Kenya and, you know, has a ripple effect on the currency and the capital market. Finally, before I let you go, uh, Shola, uh, Morgan Stanley is predicting South African equities are poised to outperform cash and bonds. Very bold predictions there. Uh, they anticipate stocks yielding 18% uh, over the next year, outperforming estimate returns of 13% for local bonds and 8% for cash. What do you reckon would be the drivers to support these estimates? Okay, so, so firstly, um, the central bank in South Africa had guided that um, by September, they are looking towards um, reducing their interest rates. Uh, that's the policy rate. Uh, so that's uh, on one hand. Uh, for inflation, um, like you know, South Africa is also part of what they are also monitoring is the inflation rates. We've seen a downward trend. It's about 5.1% now. From the 5.25, yeah, 5.2, 5.3 or that, but it was in April and May. So, um, given that we've seen that downward trend, and also um, a negative one was the fact that in Q1 2024, um, there was a decline in their GDP minus 0.1 percent from the Q4 2023 0.3 percent. So, we put all this in in in, in a bucket. 
So where, where the, the yield on the 10 year government bond today is about 9.66. Um, and so the market is about 16%. So uh, getting to about 18% uh, from now to the year end is not something that is not possible. Mm. However, um, we also want to be mindful of the fact that there are other things that would also um, impact on that. The unemployment rate, you know, one of those things that have been measured by, by the South African government, apart from inflation, is the unemployment rate, and mm. then some other um, measures around productivity and mm. the currency. So right. um, I believe that if the rate cut in September is affected, um, getting to 18% uh, on, for, the, for the equities uh, on the uh, South African market hmm. is not something that is not uh, not possible. All right, we'll keep an and eye on that. Um, yeah. I believe uh, those those metrics would yes, those metrics will be yeah. so we'll keep an eye on that and yes. um, price market accordingly. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Head of Research and Strategy, uh, Greenwich Merchant Bank, Olushola Ore Oyeniku. I look forward to having you in some other time on the conversation. Um, up next, right, the NGX has seen a steady rise in competitiveness of penny stocks. One of them taking our spotlight today is Jai's Bank. So stay with us. We'll get into it after the break. You're watching Market Pulse, and in the spotlight today, Nigeria's first full-fledged non-interest bank, uh, which operates under Islamic banking principle, Jai's Bank. Uh, its share price has seen substantial growth with a year-to-date gain of 11.3%. This makes it one of the top performing uh, amongst banking stocks this year. And uh, looking back last year, Jai's Bank had an impressive performance uh, with its share price increasing by uh, 111%. Um, but is this a buy, sell, or hold for you? Is this enough uh, to convince you to buy, sell, or hold? The poll is up on X at Narometrics, so let us know what you think and where your th sentiments lie on that. Uh, but to provide more insights, we have joining uh, me, David Olujimi, Financial Markets Analyst with Narometrics. Good evening, David. Hi, good evening, Joanna. All right, uh, great to have you in, though, from a distance. But providing a, provide us with a yes. quick... Very background, great. yeah. Provide us with a quick background to Jai's Bank. Uh, considering uh, the stock's performance year to date, do you see it matching the growth rate of the previous year, 2023? Um, this year, I don't think so. But looking back, looking at this, looking at the performance of that stock, we see resilience. Resilience as always. Resilience from last year. Resilience even this year. And one of the reasons is because Jai's Bank is one of the banks that has very few capital to raise. They have like a very their, their their demand for capital is quite small, so we are looking at the bank that would probably just be on a would be on a growth trend. They're already at eleven percent, but I don't think they can match up with last year. Okay, they may not be able to match up. We'll see about that. Uh, how would you say the bank's fundamentals, right, and strategy perhaps have supported its share price growth uh, this year and you know before now? So basically, the bank is a non-interest bank, right? So they don't, they don't, they don't earn interest income. While other banks are cashing out from high interest rates in the country, Jai's bank is one of the bank that doesn't really. But one thing is that it's almost it's it, it's a it's a it's a double-sided thing. In a way, when high interest rates are killing corporates and uh, manufacturers and people who need funds, you see Jai's bank as a very reliable option because the bank is a non-interest bank. They can literally go there. Um, there's a transaction that is called Muraha, Murabaha transaction where they just buy, the bank buys for their for the clients and they sell it to them at a marked up price. Hmm. So some of these transactions have been able to give the bank at least a a way ahead. Like this, like in 2023, they had a 42% year on year profit growth. We are yet to see their figures for this year. But I'm projecting it to be even higher than last year's because there's a lot of attention. At 30% interest rate from the banks, we are going to be seeing a lot of non-interest transactions going on this year. All right, we'll wait to see their numbers come out. But we know that Jai's Bank as well started off regional with three branches in Abuja, Kaduna, Kano. Uh, it now operates under a national license. And with this recapitalization exercise, I know you referred to it earlier. Where does it stand uh, in its plans to bolster its capital base? So Jai's, basically, the bank stands in a very good place. I'm, this is not, we're not even, we're not, we don't need to mince words. Jai's Bank stands in a very good place. It has the lowest capital to raise, basically, 
His capital was increased to 20, his, his new minimum capital base was increased to 20 billion. It already has 18.2 billion. Bank has just about 1.8 billion to raise. The bank is a bank that is owned by some of the top known industrialists in the country. You will even see Jai's bank may not even come to the market to raise funds. They just literally, they just literally need to do a private um, debt placement, and that's all. That's all they need. They need to do a private share of friend program. That's all. Even the Angote industry owns a, owns a stake in the bank. Dan Tata owns a stake in the bank. And some of the big guns, especially in the north, own stakes, mm. own stakes in the bank. Mm. So they, they, stand, a, they stand in a very good place. Mm. Yeah, so they probably wouldn't be breaking a, spe a sweat, right? But we also know that it's a penny stock. And with penny stocks, we've seen a lot of competitiveness on the NGX. Uh, what are the risks and opportunities and perhaps your strategy when it comes to dealing with such penny stocks on the NGX? So one thing we're dealing with penny stocks such as this that have the propensity to, um, to generate dividends. For example, Giants Bank is going to be paying dividends by August. And it's, it's quite small, though, but... For stocks like this that have a propensity to generate dividends, one thing you do is that you 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 have like a a medium term strategy. You don't go in short. You don't short on you don't short on stocks like this. You literally go in at the start of the year. Maybe maybe first quarter of the year you go in. You exit coming to you exit at the period where you know that your dividends payment is short. You exit mm -hmm. at the middle of the year of the next year, but it's not. It's not the kind of it's not the kind of stock you hold on to for you want to make. You can hold on to it for big gains. It can obviously generate big gains, just mm -hmm. like we've seen with Julie Pierce. Right. It has done magic in the AJX this year. Okay, so that, that's the strategy around it from your perspective. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure having you in, uh, David Olujimi, financial markets analyst with yes. Narametrics. All right, where do your sentiments lie on this particular stock? Share with us uh, on X at Narametrics, buy, sell, or hold. Um, up next, we're heading to the African markets. Let's see what's going on there. Uh, African markets are mostly in the red. Uh, Egyptian exchange broke its bullish run. Um, it's down 0.36%. And there are no surprises uh, with NSE, which is down uh, over three quarters of a percent, right? We're seeing that happen. The GSC as well is pretty much flat. Um, but um, yeah, Casablanca Stock Exchange, uh, Moroccan All Share Index is also bullish pretty much. So we'll continue to see how things continue to develop on the African markets. And that's pretty much the show uh, today on our radar. Of course, will be the bank's response or alignment with the now retrospective windfall tax of FX gains uh, to the tune of 70%. And uh, will stocks uh, perform, ca will stocks, right, outperform cash and bonds in South Africa within the next year? That's something we'll also be tracking. All this and more right here on Market Pulse. 4 p.m. every weekday. Don't miss it. Join me tomorrow, same time on New Central, in partnership with Narometrics. Here's a performance of markets outside of Africa.